This morning I want to talk about texting. Um, now I'm not a big technology guy. I like technology. I like you know what it can do, um, but I'm not overly big on it. And you know when something like texting first came out, I was pretty slow at receiving it um, because you know the old way of just picking up the phone, talking to people. It seemed to work pretty good for quite a long time. Um, but as time went on and I began to use it a little bit more and a little bit more, I've come to really enjoy it. Uh, it, it, it works well with my life. Now, I'm not the texter that my wife is, that my daughter is. I mean, my wife's battery will be dead by noon because she's, you know, going like crazy. I'm one of those guys, I can go two days on the same battery because I'm just, I'm not all about it. But the advantages of it are, are that I can continue to do the things that I'm focused on, and when I have time, I can respond to people. And I love that, because I'm not a multitasker. Um, if I am doing something and somebody texts me or you call, uh, the first reaction in my heart is, quit annoying me. I mean, I just, sorry, that's, that's the first reaction. And so I usually don't check my phone immediately, all right? I let it be for a while. And then sometimes I forget you called or texted. But anyways, so if it takes a while, that's why. But eventually I get to it. And I like that because like yesterday, for instance, Nikki and I made a long trip and we had a lot of work to do and we were just focused all day long till late into the night. But yet, I was able to carry on numerous conversations and connect with friends and family and people in the church and so on because of texting. It's just, it's great. But one of the things that the Lord was showing me this week is that I tend to take a similar approach to Him sometimes. And one of the disadvantages to texting is this. One of the disadvantages is that even though we can exchange information, if you will, it's really hard to connect through texting. And although you are able to get things done and so on, if that goes on for a period of time and you're just texting and you're not really connecting with people, there's something that happens to our hearts. There's a dullness that happens to our hearts when we're not connecting with people. Now, part of what I like about texting is that I don't have to take the time to connect with people. Because when I take the time to connect with people, it keeps me from getting the things done that I want to get done. And I'm one of those people that I get locked on something and I want to get it done. But what I find is that after a period of time, although I'm getting all kinds of things done and I'm checking things off my list, there's a dullness that comes over my heart. And so I start having this longing to connect with the Lord, to connect with other people. But I also, at the same time, I've got this other thing of, I want to get these other things done. And if I can just check these things off my list, I'm going to feel such a freedom. And so there's this battle that goes on. And I feel that same battle with the Lord. And one of the things that the Lord is showing me is that my priorities sometimes are to get things done rather than really connecting with him. And not only does it hurt his heart, but I find that it hurts my heart. And all of a sudden, the things that I want to accomplish, I even have a hard time with that because what I find is the desire in my heart starts to die down. So I want to ask you this. Where is your heart right now just in general? Not even about the Lord for a second. Where is it at in general? Does your heart feel full? Do you feel a lot of desire? Or are you finding that you've just got to push yourself through life in general, through accomplishing tasks, whatever it is, whatever you're doing? Do you have to push yourself? I want to throw something out to you. It may be that your heart is not being fueled. 
Your heart is not connecting. Your heart is not really connecting with people. You can be communicating with them. You can be communicating with them through texting. You can even be doing it through conversation, but not really opening yourself up. There is a price to pay when we keep people at a distance for whatever reason it is. It has its advantages, but ultimately it will cost you. I want to look at a scripture this morning. It's in Luke chapter 5, and it really shows some of the heart of Jesus. And it shows, I think, who God is and what he's looking for in us and how we can really have our hearts filled. Um, Luke chapter 5, verse 14, and there's just three verses I want to look at, 14, 15, and 16. Um, I, and I'm not going to, there's a context that happens before this that I'm not really going to get into, but I want to read verse 14 so that you see some of the heart of Jesus. Jesus had just healed somebody, okay? This is a bona fide miracle. Somebody's life had just been changed. Um, they had been going, you know, years of knowing life in one way, and suddenly God does something that they thought could never happen. Their life is changed. They are unbelievably excited. And what do you do when you're unbelievably excited and something big happens to you? You post it on Facebook. You see how many likes you can get. Well, that's exactly what this guy wanted to do, but he didn't have the technology to do it. So he was getting ready to run around and actually be face to face with people and tell everybody what had just happened. I mean, he couldn't contain himself. But this is the response of Jesus to him. He says, don't tell anyone. What? But go show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. So on the one hand, he's not saying that he doesn't want everyone to find out or anyone to find out. But on the other hand, he's saying, don't take this and just run and just blab it to everybody. Then he goes on and he says, or the, it says in verse 15, yet the news about him, this is talking about Jesus spread all the more so that crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. Jesus was purposely trying not to promote himself. He was doing the exact opposite, and yet he couldn't hardly get away from people. They were coming after him. Now this, to me, is crazy because our very nature is to constantly promote ourselves. Now, when you think about promoting, most of our minds go to the salesman type, you know, that's always talking about themselves and that kind of thing. But I don't care what your personality is, you and I have ways of promoting ourselves. Even if we're a quiet person, we have ways of promoting ourselves. We have ways of doing things in front of others so that they see it, you know, even if we don't talk about it. Oh, oops, you found out about that. Oh, man. So we, we, we just, there's a desire to promote ourselves. And part of that desire comes from we want to be loved. And somehow when we get attention, whether it's for something good we've done or even something negative, we love attention. Even if we don't want to admit it, we love attention. And that's part of a desire that God's put in there. It's part of the way that he has created us. But here was the thing. Jesus had no need of it. Why did Jesus have no need of promoting himself? Why did Jesus have no need of attention from others? Here is the reason. Jesus was getting his heart filled by God himself. And so suddenly, you know what? He wasn't at the whim of everybody around him. It didn't matter what everybody around him wanted him to do. He had no need to fulfill their desires because he was being filled by the Father himself. Now, imagine for a second that you had that freedom. Imagine for a second 
that you were so filled by the love of the Father that you didn't feel a need for other people's attention. Now, again, we don't want to talk about this. We don't even want to admit uh, this, but we all have our ways, okay? Some of us are vocal. We'll go to social media, and, and we'll throw things out there to try and get attention. Some of us, we don't go that route. We're, we're not about that. We don't, we don't like that. But we have our ways of trying to get attention. One of the things that the Lord's been pointing out to me is that I am constantly... Do we have a dead battery? What? Okay, so one of the things that the Lord showed me is that I'm constantly trying to be a perfectionist at everything I do, and I'm trying to do all these multiple things to the point that I really don't have time to connect with God in the way that I need to. I'm doing ministry here. I'm doing, you know, the second job through the department. I've got... um, you know, the martial art ministry, I've got my family, I've got the farm that's going on, I've got all these things that we're, we're trying to do, and what it does is, it keeps me from really being able to connect with the Lord. Now, one of the things I had to ask myself is, why am I doing all of these things? Well, part of the reason I'm doing all these things is because In one form or another, I'm trying to earn other people's attention. That's part of what's going on. And that's that's humiliating to even say. But here's the deal. All of us have this. Some of you are drama queens. Some of you are drama kings, okay? And you do it. You, you, You purposely cause controversy because you want attention. Seriously. Some of us, it's through the jobs that we do, and it's it's our performance. Uh, Some of us, it's through the things things that we say and the things that we do, and we just want people to be, you know, just shocked at whatever. But whatever it is, it's about attention. But here is the deal. We can be free of that when we are connecting with the Father and we are receiving attention from here. So here, I want to read one more verse here, and I want you to, to capture this. Verse 16 says, but, but Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Jesus often withdrew. Why is he withdrawing? Because he has a hunger also. Jesus was God, but he was fully flesh. And you know what? He had a desire in him. He wanted attention also. But you know what? He wanted attention from the one who was perfect. The one whose love was absolutely unconditional. We were talking in Sunday school this morning just about that kind of unconditional love and just realizing how none of us have that. And I was convicted. I was thinking about, you know, even as much as I love my kids, Um, You know, there is just uh, an unbelievable love there for for those of you who are parents, a love that says you would die for them, you would you would do whatever for them. But I was convicted about how I get frustrated with them at times. And I was thinking specifically how, you know, I I don't think I've ever said to my kids, you know, you're dumb. (laughs) But you know what? I've done plenty of things to make them feel that way because of my frustration. And, And I thought for a second how, you know, even by people who love us, they tend to hurt us. Because I love my kids, but I hurt them. I love my wife, but you know what? I hurt her because I get selfish. And so in thinking about that, where can I go that I will receive unconditional love? It's only to the Father. He's the one who can give me unconditional love. And here's the beauty of it. When I'm receiving that, then here's what can happen. I can give it to others. But in order to receive that, here's part of what has to happen. I've got to get away, okay? And I've got to block time for just me and the Lord. And here's part of what the Lord was convicting me of. Now, I do that on a daily basis, okay? I get away. I go be with the Lord. But you know what? It's for a short time. Because I've got an agenda that I want to accomplish that day. 
And so I have a short time with the Lord. And when it starts getting towards the end of that time, I'm not fully open to him. I'm thinking about what I've got to get going and what I've got to accomplish that day. I want you to notice that this says Jesus withdrew to lonely places. And what that means is he didn't just go off to the side while the crowd's out here, spend some time to the Father, and then get right back to work. He got away to where he could not be reached. No cell phone service. He couldn't be reached. Why? Because he needed time where he had no distractions. And I started thinking about that. When was the last time that I did that? I'll spend the daily time, but when was the last time that I got away to where I had no distractions at all? I'll be honest, that's hard for me to do because I'm always, again, thinking about all that I've got to accomplish. And why am I doing that? Because somehow that's going to earn me attention and somehow I'm going to feel loved for that. How dumb is that? What I'm actually doing is I'm actually blocking off the love that I need by going this other route that has never, ever panned out. Because I've found that no matter how hard I work and no matter uh, how many things I accomplish, you all are all concerned about your own lives. You're not calling me up, giving me hand claps, you know? And I'm not one to post it on Facebook, so I'm not getting the likes that way. But you all are... You're, you're doing your own thing. You're, you're wanting attention as well. And so what's the answer? Well, the answer is, is that we go to the source, the one who can love perfectly. But here's part of the deal. We've got to give up our other stuff. I've got to stop trying to earn it through what I'm accomplishing. Maybe for you, it's the drama or maybe it's the things that you're doing or the shocking, whatever it is, whatever it is. Maybe for you, it's, it's trying to constantly do things for other people. I, I mean, and that looks so good. I mean, think about Jesus. Here is healing people. I, I mean, the, the wise counsel to him would have been, hey, the loving thing to do is to stay out here and keep healing people. No, it's not, because that's not what it's about. It's ultimately about being loved by God and loving Him. It's not even about ministry. But so many of us, we, we get to the point that we think that the things that we do are so important. You know, my kids are so important. I've got to keep pouring into them. I can't take time away and go be with the Lord. Yes, you can. If you're determined enough, you can find a way. But we start to think that all our things are so important. So here's the deal. We are able to connect with the Father. We're able to be loved in a way and to experience that, and we need that, okay? If your heart's going to be full, if you're going to be running on desire and not running on empty, you need that. The but is, though, it means some sacrifices. It means saying no to some other things that, that you think are going to fill you, and they're not. So it comes down to where the rubber meets the road. Am I going to block some things off and say, you know what, I just need time to get away and be with the Lord and not feel a stress like i got to get back to something in a certain amount of time? And all of us need that. Will you make the time? It will change our life. And we'll go from just pushing ourselves through things to feeling loved in a way that words can't express. Jesus, thank you that you have shown us the way, not only modeling through, through dying, but you also showed us the way in the way that you lived your life. You got a way to be with the Father. And that love is available for every one of us who are sitting here. But it's a matter of us laying down whatever our distractions, our idols, whatever they are, and just saying, we're going to take time just to be with you and to hear from you. And Lord, I pray if there's one here who's never heard your voice uh, in their heart in a way that grabs them, I pray that today would be the day that they hear you clearly, that they would hear those words that I love you coming from you, our creator. And I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you would